Alrighty, guys, welcome to the Get Active podcast. Today we're here with Stacey and Maddie Turner. Now, these guys are from the Chief Life. Uh, welcome, guys, and uh, tell us a little bit about the journey towards the Chief Life. Thanks, Joel. Yeah, thanks for having us. It's pretty exciting to be on the other side of a, <laughs> a podcast interview. I um, so appreciate you getting us on. I guess uh, we, we're almost about to celebrate our fifth birthday as the Chief Life. Yeah. So it's kind of Maddie's idea. Um, yeah, about five years ago, he kind of said, look, we're helping so many people in our local gyms, but what if we could help people all over Australia or even all over the world? And, you know, with his kind of PT and, and my nutrition background, we kind of joined forces and took it online. Yeah, so the, the company is actually a, a, like a health consultancy company. So what we do is we help people with nutrition, with personalizing their nutrition, but then we go in and um, help companies as well with like wellness and work and stuff. So it's kind of, it's quite a diverse um, like kind of scene really. So we, we do everything from gym space and helping individuals to drop body fat and increase their muscle and, and do all the things that are the sexy things in the gym um, because unfortunately just going and training doesn't always do that for you so we look at that and how to how to optimize your performance in the gym uh, but then we also look into things like stress mitigation and sleep and what what it really came down to for us was we found out that you couldn't just give someone a meal plan and expect them to see good results. There was other factors in life that came into play, things such as your sleep, things such as your stress, um, that really have a major effect on how the body is gonna to respond to the food that you're eating and the things that you are doing. So we found the business has kind of really evolved over time because you know we started out, as Maddie said, just helping people with, with food and with their meal plans and we've kind of evolved with our community over time to explore other avenues, to explore other pillars of health and yeah, eventually kind of working towards all seven of the pillars that we think are important, including, you know, stress mitigation and outside time and good quality water Sleep, and all those right. things. Yeah. 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 That, you know, people really need to think about and, and aren't really. Yeah. So your programs, as you said, they're pretty diverse. So, Tell us a little bit about some of your nutritional programs and, and how they work. Yeah, definitely. So we've always kind of or always tried to take a personalized approach for individuals because depending on the person's size, on their weight, on what they're doing, what their body, like what, for instance, their body measurements are, the hip and waist measurements, what their actual activity output is, um, like all of these things need to come into play. And we can't just say, hey, go and eat these meals um, because it, we need to take into all of these factors and make sure that they're getting nutrition that's sorted for them um, and for their goals. Like if you want to be putting on size, you need to be eating a certain amount of food compared to if you want to be dropping weight. If you want to not drop any weight, but keep it like kind of at the same level and boost up your energy, then you probably need to be increasing your food a little bit. And looking at that, we, we made sure that we were always personalizing the approach to the individual. And realistically, every single person is different. What, the three of us eat can be the same. That's completely fine. Like we can go and eat a steak with some sweet potato and some vegetables and maybe some avocado, but the amounts that each of us have might vary. Um, or it, within that meal, it might not vary, but within the day, it would definitely vary with the amounts of food that we're having. Yeah, absolutely. So I got a nutrition plan from you guys quite some time ago when you started. Um, I also got an updated one a few years back and the difference between those two plans was massive. Now, mm. different styles of foods, I mean, uh, different ways to uh, consume your food. There's keto, there's, you know, all these different types. What do you guys, uh, I guess, program for? Do you, are you keto? Is it zone? What do you guys work towards? Yeah, there's so many different ways to skin a cat and mm. not any one way is going to be the way. Um, what we started with was, I guess, kind of a zone-ish protocol, um, which for those that, listeners that aren't aware of it, it's a 30% coming from your protein and your fat and 40% coming from your carbohydrates across your day, but also at each meal. And there's a, almost like a synergy in that, that ratio uh, for some people and for a majority of people of getting them back to a baseline equilibrium. You know, if your hormones are haywire or you've tried, you know, a lot of diets and you feel like you're yo-yoing or you're just not really kind of not sure what to be doing right now, it's a really nice way to get back to a baseline. So what we found is like a phase one is a beautiful way to 
get people starting with this. So we would figure out what they would need. We would create a meal plan for them um, so that they wouldn't have to do any of the thinking. They literally just get the plan based off of their needs and they go away and they make the food. And so it's like, you know, give teach a man to fish and, and he can feed himself or like that kind of thing. So yeah. starting there and then transitioning into phase two. So that would have been your second meal plan that you got more of like a maintenance thing, but also giving a bit more variety, um, maybe reintroducing certain things that you might not have had in the phase one, which is more of a detox kind of get all the can we swear on this podcast? You can say whatever you like. All right. <laughs> to get all the shit out, like phase one's like detox the shit out. And then phase two is more of a like, you know, let's make this realistic, like for long term, make it work for your life. Um, you know, if you want to go out for meals and things like that, working with family and all that sort of stuff. And then phase three. It's kind of like a, a learn to fish even better. Yeah. <laughs> what we do is teach you how to macro count and teach you how to design your own meals. And realistically, this comes into, I think it comes into being able to be as flexible as possible when you're out and about, but also is really good for athletes, people who are looking to increase their performance. Like, first of all, we need to make sure that we clean the car. So that's where the phase one, phase two comes into play. From there, once your basics are getting hit, consistently then we can look into how do we improve performance through food even more and that's where we start to really tinker with hey what's your body type how much food are you eating right now what is the major goals are we trying to put on strength are we trying to drop some more body fat and we really dive deeper 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 down the rabbit hole to trying to figure out i guess and tinker with your food to best suit you with giving you a little bit of it's pretty much giving you the reins to say, hey, like this is how you can do it moving forward. These are the foods that are going to be most favorable, the foods that are going to be probably a little less favorable and the foods that are going to be least favorable. Let's try to make sure we're always eating from the most favorable groups and um, let's see how we can make you thrive from there. And that phase three is kind of like painting the car now that it's clean. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> make it look schmick. Give me a blue spray. <laughs> a big part of what you guys do too is is in your questionnaire when you start. So you do ask types of food you like, if there's any allergies, things like that. Uh, but also how much sleep you're getting, the work you do, the sports you play. It, it does play a big part in, in what, it does, what you do and what you eat. Um, mm -hmm. How beneficial to you guys is that questionnaire? It's everything really. Like if we didn't have that, we wouldn't understand. It wouldn't be a personalized meal plan. It wouldn't be able to, we wouldn't be able to do what we do if we had just a person's name and email address, really. Yeah, yeah. being like stabbing, stabbing in the dark, you know, yeah. like the needle in a haystack. We really, the more information an individual gives us, the, the better. better. And yeah, the more we can assist and support them on their journey. Um, and I also need to add, you know, when you asked about kind of what style of, of nutrition we offer, from once people have got that baseline back with their zone, then it's whatever suits them. So, you know, we work keto, um, intermittent fasting, carb cycling. Um, you know, yeah. Maddie's even been experimenting with some, some carnivore stuff. Yeah. So we are open to whatever the individual wants to utilize. As long as it's a reasonable reason. protocol, yeah. Um, <laughs> Something that has some science and some reason yeah, behind it. Yeah, absolutely. And also honoring their individual needs. So, you know, everyone's different and some people are going to thrive on intermittent fasting. Some people are going to thrive on keto. Some people are better off staying on zone. So um, that's where the macro consult's really useful because then it's figuring out like what people have done before and what hasn't, hasn't worked. And then that's when we can really tailor it to the person and maybe not even put a label. Maybe it's just like real food for real people kind of thing. Yeah. Learning how to actually just, look at your food and realize that that's enough food on your, on your plate. Like intuitively eating is something that I think most people want to do, but don't necessarily do very well because they say they eat healthy, but their midline is not in a favorable state or their, their bloods show that they've got high cholesterol or high blood sugar. It's like those things are, are unfavorable, especially when it's happening consistently. So how do we get you to a, an actual healthy state where you're eating real healthy food consistently with maybe not even having to weigh and measure? Yeah. So you guys talk about a healthy state a fair bit. Now you guys do retreats. Tell us a little bit about that because I, I guess that would be a really good way to uh, reset the body and, and work in those parameters that you're talking about. Yeah, it's really like a, a full refresher and what we do within those retreats, we actually see such a transformation within just three days of, of individuals, which is crazy. 
Um, well, it's not that crazy because really we put them through some stuff that, that is meant to do that. It's meant to test the individual. It's meant to make them um, essentially look at their life and reassess some things and maybe recalculate as to how they want to reintroduce into the world. And so many people think of a retreat as a time to get away from their life. But what we really, we really encourage is how can we look at your life and figure out the things that we can make better so when you come back into your day to day life, you don't get to that burnt out stage that you've come to going to the retreat. So make sure that you've got the tools and techniques to reintroduce into the real life or real world um, and, and actually stay calm and stay cool and stay collected and, and keep up things like meditation or yoga or fitness and utilizing tips like, um, I, I don't know, the breath work and ice baths and things like that that we're doing regularly on these, on these programs or on the retreat. Um, to make that work in your lifestyle going back home. And they're finding that the most successful people are utilizing these things. They might sound like buzzwords where we're talking about yoga and meditation and some people are like, oh, that's really not my thing. And it's sort of a don't knock it till you've tried it. And what Maddie was saying before about, you know, it's crazy the transformation that we see and it, it is crazy and it isn't because we know that we're going to see amazing things happen, but we're still blown away every single time because, you know, something... Like, for example, with the ice baths, mm. we, we did it for the physical benefits. We know there's mental benefits as well, but we were focusing on the physical and help. Like Maddie was guiding everyone through benefits, the breathing yeah. and, and all that sort of stuff and overcoming challenge. And then on the other side of it, once we chatted with everybody and asked them what they got out of it, it was so much more than we had even realized was going to be an experience. I think because it's such a fear-driven experience, like to hop into a, a bucket literally <laughs> full of water that's, filled with ice like we had a, a, over a, a bunch of people that you don't really even know yeah well, i mean we had 200 kilos of ice smashed into wow. this um into this tub and we had them jump into the tubs for three minutes at a time and to hear that without having going through gone going through any of the uh the breath work or knowing how to deal with that that's just a stressful thing like yeah. just to think about sitting in water like that that cold for that long <laughs> Well, yeah, sorry. And so realistically, once we teach them how to do it, what it shows them is that they can up and down regulate stress whenever they need to. So it gives them a real understanding of, well, if I'm scared of something or there's a situation where I'm really angry or upset or stressed, I can bring that back into my control through doing the things such as breath work that I learned during that, that, um, that ice bath. And so really we saw people overcome their fears and then feel like they could literally take on the world because they're like, well, if I can do that, I can do anything. So it's, it's really cool. And I was just going to add to that on top of it, giving that information of you're going to sit in an ice bath for three minutes. They're also, some of them are quite introverted. Mm. And so going in an ice bath on your own, everybody is staring at you. Mm. Like that in itself can help some of them to overcome some things that they didn't even think were issues. So yeah, it was pretty profound. So it was pretty exciting to see um, at the few retreats that we've done that at and how powerful it can be. Yeah, and each, each retreat we try to do something different. We've actually pretty much pretty much sold out completely to repeat buyers for this next retreat that we've got coming up in May. I think we've got maybe three spots left. So um, we, we actually had sold it completely out to repeat buyers. But unfortunately, two of them, or three of them had to pull out due to family issues and the situations that we won't go into. But I mean, yeah, so if you are in the Byron Hinterlands or you're willing to travel to the Byron Hinterlands, then we're definitely happy to take another few people on board. We can uh, leave a, a uh, link in the show notes to that for sure. Yeah, totally. I'll send it so to you. So it's up in the Byron region. Uh, you're always having it there. Is it like a, a from the pictures I've seen and... It's more like a uh, sort of farmhouse, is it? Yes, it's an organic farm that we go to. And we stumbled across it at a retreat that Maddie and I went on. And we just fell in love with it. We were like, this is the perfect place for us. Um, because it is an organic farm, you know, it, we can eat off of the land. Yep. And so it's just a beautiful way to kind of show people how you can live very self-sufficiently. Yeah, really, really kind of. Grow. Uh, I think resonated with us with their their lifestyle and their way of living and realistically the farm itself once you get there you're pretty much completely blocked off from the outside world just because it's got this tree line and it's like as soon as you get there you just feel like oh this is like a magic land like it's super crazy what it does and uh, we are toying with the idea of doing some overseas retreats that will come eventually but for right now this is like the perfect location so we don't want to don't want to mess with a, a good thing while we've got it right now. And if there's interest, there's the possibility of a September retreat as well. Yeah. So we've been floating that idea. 
at the same location just because this May one sold out so quickly. <laughs> awesome. Uh, you guys also have uh, different things online. I'm currently, I think, day seven in a 30-day gratefulness challenge. Tell us a little bit yeah. about that. Yeah, so gratitude is a massive thing that we both love and do every single day. And for us, we were it was actually on New Year's Day. I woke up this year and I was like, I really want to give back this year. And we want to um, create content that helps individuals out and stop being secretive about what things are. Just literally gift it and see what people do and respond with it. The things that are helping us to be more successful. Exactly. And I was like something that we do every single day is, is gratitude. Like we both have our own practices and ways of doing it. But one thing that includes for both of us is a, a three, like we, we list off three things that we're grateful for. And I just kind of said, Hey Stace, do you mind if I kind of spend an hour or two just creating this really quickly? I just want to put this up, put it online and see, see what we get as a response for it. I'm not trying to sell to anyone or anything. I literally want to give it as like a, Hey, let's, let's make, everyone feel the way that we feel in regards to happiness. But the cool thing is, is that seeing the post every single day, it almost just like brings back the gratitude again. And I, I've seen that from a few of the different people doing it as well. They've now come and said in their posts, I'm so grateful for this group and, and the gratitude that everyone else is posting. And I think it's just cool to see what people are uh, thankful for each day, what they're actually grateful for each day. And it can be something as small as like my coffee cup or, mm -hmm my bed sheets um, or a fan or aircon, And then people write through to like, thank you so much to all the fireys who have been doing the work they've been doing in Australia right now. Or thank you for allowing me to have some money to be able to donate to the fires. Um, or it, it, yeah, something like world peace, like things like that. There's, there's all different. It goes from as small as it can be right through to as big as it can be. It's just beautiful to see. And some of the people have actually found that they struggled doing a gratitude practice prior to this challenge because you know, for example, one lady would say, well, what, what else can I say other than the three boys that I have, like my husband and my two kids? Like, what else should I be grateful for every day? Because that's the most important thing to me. But seeing everybody else's posts helped her to then explore, like, she knows she's got a great life, but now she can really name those things because she's seeing other people's examples. Yeah. And so yeah. it doesn't have to be this profound thing every day. It's just like, what are we blessed for? And you wake up and you might be having a shitty day. But taking that moment to acknowledge what you feel grateful for, what you're so blessed for, it just changes your perspective and your outlook for the day. And again, it's one of those buzz things that's going around at the moment. It's like, oh, gratitude. But once you do it, I mean, you're probably noticing it too, Joel. Like once you start participating in a program like this, it, it just does have such a positive outlook or impact on your life. Yeah, I've actually done, we've got a microbiologist who works for us who does a lot of our research. So she'll go, she goes and checks out a lot of the studies and realistically there is so much beneficial studies that also well, so, so much evidence in the studies showing that it's got great benefits for us as individuals. So, I mean, I do put that out in the challenge as well. There's a fair few emails that come out with it or 30 days of emails, which is just a reminder for the day. Hey, it's, it's day two, it's day three, it's day four and gives you a little tip as to maybe something that you might be grateful for that day. Not that you have to follow that. Um, and yeah, I think it's just good to have that information as well. Like reasons why we're doing it. And the support in the group, is a very supportive group. Like it's, it's full of like-minded people, which is awesome. You, you don't feel bad posting. You don't feel, I think judged, um, judged. Yeah. While you, while you post it all. Yeah, absolutely. And it can be anything. As you said, um, today I was grateful for the beach. Um, mm -hmm. we went there for a little while without the older kids, just with uh, Ruben. And, and it was nice just to go there, walk in the water and just, look at everything and, and, and be happy. It was, um, I'm very grateful to be able to do that. Yeah, now, that's incredible. That's actually something I wanted to add to the meditation. So many people think of meditation as sitting down, crossing your legs and singing, oh, but really meditation is, is just what you just talked about. Like going to the beach, putting your feet in the sand and enjoying that moment. That's a form of meditation. Yeah. So that's something we really try to bring to people's mind on the retreat is, hey, let's, let's explore what meditation might be for you. Like what do you enjoy doing as meditation rather than maybe a pre-recorded message? <laughs> yeah. Cause meditation is just being alone with yourself. So yeah. away from distraction or away from technology and it can be with other people, you know, like you're spending time with your son. Um, that, that is a form of meditation. Just that 
yeah. that beautiful presence, that beautiful mindful interaction. Yeah. <laughs> Some people do need that guided, I guess, meditation to start possibly. But yeah. when you, you know, you understand what it is, you can just go out and be you. Everybody's yeah. going to be completely different. Mm -hmm. Now, you guys touched on a bit of intermittent fasting before. Um, mm. Let's tell us, talk us through a little bit more about that. Some people might not, or they've probably heard about it, might not know much about it. How do you guys uh, put this into people's plans and 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 work with that? Yeah, so we actually run an intermittent fasting challenge because it's really hard to just give someone a meal plan and try to explain what intermittent fasting is and how that best works for them. And I think um, realistically, intermittent fasting is a bit of a buzzword right now, or fasting in general. The, the reasons for that is since the 90s, there's been a whole heap of studies done on what fasting can do for the body. A lot of it comes down to health and longevity for the individual. And we can see it when we start to do um, anything as little as a three minute, uh, sorry, three hour difference. So say for instance, you hop up at 5.30 in the morning and you typically are used to eating your breakfast straight away. By holding off an hour and a half to eat your breakfast and by eating your dinner an hour and a half earlier, making a three hour difference in your day from what you're fasting, that's enough to start to get some form of benefits of what fasting can do for you. And there's a, there's a whole host of them which we can go through. Um, but realistically, the, the most study and the best of the studies has been done around protocols, which is 16 and eight. So 16 hours of fasting with an eight hour uh, feeding window and um, 16 and eight. And then you've also got your 15 and nine. So similar sort of concept. It's just like the longer, the better, ideally. Now, fasting and intermittent fasting, some people talk about having one meal a day. Some people talk about having multiple meals a day. Some people talk about having maybe a meal every other day. I think the issue with this whole protocol is that so many people think of it as you're just not eating. You just stop eating a meal. What we see with that is that people start to um, gain fat because their body goes into a stress mode where it needs to utilize anything that it can. And so it holds on to any extra fat that you have any carbohydrates or extra fuel that you get into the body during that day. It says, I'm going to store this for a rainy day because right now um, every single day has been a rainy day. So I need to make sure that um, I've got as much fat stored up as I can so I can survive in this life. So what we really try to utilize and or guess educate people on is what intermittent fasting is, how a good protocol looks and what it might look like for your structure of a day. But then also this is the amount of foods you should be eating we actually partner with the carb cycling, which means that we're doing some high fat days followed up by a high carbohydrate day. And that helps um, keep the body guessing. It really does, but it's also really beneficial just in regards to what that does for fasting. Like your body is really good at responding to higher fats when it's in a, in a fasted method. Like realistically, if you look at a cell, in the cell it takes energy from either fats or sugars. And if we are used to burning sugars all the time, what happens is every time we go to burn sugar and we don't have sugar in the body, we need to get sugar from somewhere. And that is what neoglucogenesis is, is in the body, which is where we break down our own muscle stores to make carbohydrates or to make sugars, essentially. So we don't want that to be happening. So what we do like to do with people is get them into a fat burning state through doing a, a fat adapted program, essentially. So it's like three days of fat of a high fat day where it starts transitioning to using fats and then they take that high carb day just to replenish everything that they've missed out on or glycogen stores and make sure that they've got the energy to get through what they need to within the following days. And that program itself has just seen such great benefits and really it's the 30 day insight. It's not a, not a 30 day answer. It's a 30 day like, Hey, look what you can achieve in 30 days. Now, how do we keep utilizing something like this and continue forward? Yeah. So it does take a, a while to, um, to I guess, gain momentum with that. And that 30 days is a good insight um, to have a go, whether it is for mm. you or whether it's not for you. 30 days will sort of sort you in the right direction. I might actually put uh, your podcast uh, of your webinar on your yeah, totally. intermittent of fasting in the show notes because that's a, a good way for people to understand a little bit more. It also will include the um your 30 day challenge as well in there so if yeah, people definitely. are interested in in learning some more they can contact you guys also um episode 211 like i know i don't want to just 
boast about the podcast, but um, we just I just interviewed a guy called Daniel Pomper, Dr. Daniel Pomper, and he's one of the original kind of not founders, but he was right there at the beginning when uh, in 1990s they were doing a lot of studies around what fasting was and how it can help you. And his whole thing is to do a cellular detox. So he finds a lot of people have either mercury or lead poisoning. He goes through a heap of different protocols to get them to do um, fasting as well as a few other things to detox their cells and make sure that they've got, um, it really just talks a lot about what the benefits of doing fast and longer fast as well. It doesn't just talk about intermittent fasting. We talk about that a lot, but it dives deep into Hey, what, what is a 24 hour fast and a 72 hour fast? And what's the benefits of doing fasting for five days, which is, yeah, is really insightful. Yeah. Oh, well, while we're talking about podcast, you guys are over 200 episodes in. What are some of your favorite ones? Obviously that one's one right up there for you, Maddie. What are some of the other favorites? Uh, that you guys yeah I mean that's a great question Joel in terms of education the ones that we often recommend are episode 100 around gluten um, with Dr Tom O'Brien and there's a podcast on caffeine there's a podcast on on sugar one three or five maybe yeah and then there's one on Sleep is probably the one that we actually recommend the, the most, which is uh, episode 40 and episode 75. That's one that we, we constantly point people towards because um, there's just such a benefit to sleep. And so many people don't utilize their sleep correctly and they go and train nonstop and actually don't get any of the benefits from their training because their body's constantly in a state of being wrecked and not being able sleep to deprived. recover. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, there's a few educational ones that are pretty good. Um, in terms of quite inspiring ones, I know there's been some with the Next Level crew that I really enjoyed. Um, I think we might have lost Joel. Joel, can you yep, still hear I'm us? I'm here, yep. Yep, you got okay. us there. Perfect, there you go. Just frozen the screen. Yeah. Not asleep, I promise. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's, there's a few with the Next Level crew. Um, I can't remember the exact numbers, but NXT LVL, if you Google that with our... Yeah, it kind of looks a lot into like personal, how do you build yourself up? Yeah. Well, you um, guys there's over 200 episodes to go yeah, back and literally. binge listen to for anyone that's interested. Um, now, with, with your meal plans, obviously different uh, lifestyles and dietary choices these days. We talked about gluten just before and things like that. How do you guys work around different uh, dietary requirements? Yeah, something we really like to do is actually detox individuals first, which we talked about a little bit, but... Um, what we're finding is more and more people because of the way that the food is being processed now are starting to have intolerances to food um, and they might not be willing to admit it but once you actually take these foods or remove these foods swap them out for a little bit of time and reintroduce them they say oh that's why I was bloated every day or that's why I constantly had a runny nose or that's why I had skin issues and that's why my nails were always weak or that's why my teeth are are like this. And the list goes on really. There's so much that we can relate back to realistically. If you're, if you're having something wrong with your body, typically we can fix it in some form or address it in some manner through your food. What is the hard thing right now is that so many people talk about why would you remove any foods because these foods are designed for us to eat um but the issue is when when we're getting uh, i guess toxins sprayed on our food when they're getting heavily processed before they come to us we we don't actually understand what what is happening behind closed doors and so when we then eat those foods they do create a host of different issues so typically what we do is we remove um, what we call the fun five uh, which is gluten, dairy, sugar, which are probably the three main main ones that people have an understanding of, hey, these might have an issue. Um, and then the last two are caffeine and alcohol. And realistically, we, we give this as advice. We say, hey, if you want to, we recommend detoxing for these from these for 30 days. We'll teach you how to reintroduce them after the 30 days. And let's see how your body actually responds to them. The ones that probably give the most surprise to individuals is the gluten and the dairy. Um, and once again, it, it's a different beast to what it used to be 50 or 60 years ago. However, studies have come out from World War II saying that they did have, they did blood, blood, uh, there was like some frozen bloods that they found. And they literally found that everyone that they had bloods of had an intolerance to, to gluten at that time. So it, it is an ever evolving beast, but 
there is issues back then and it's just the fact that people eat it without understanding or without correlating that that's what the issue is so realistically we, we really try to tailor to individuals if someone comes to us and says hey i'm a celiac or hey um, i need a low fodmap diet or hey i'm vegan or a vegetarian and i want to i want to keep to that that's something that we do cater to we make sure that we're, we're seeing to the individual and as maddie said with the toxins that are getting sprayed on the food we're kind of getting hammered from all angles and not knowing that we're getting hammered from all angles like our livers are on overdrive our guts are destroyed you know so many people have leaky gut any kind of autoimmune issues they're all kind of stemming because everything's related in our bodies everything's linked mm -hmm. it's all kind of stemming from the food that we choose to put in our bodies the the products that we use on our skin you know it's all going into our bloodstream and it's all affecting us in some way so as many said like detoxing from those foods is essential and it's always been a priority for us being people that are i'm allergic to gluten and dairy maddie's intolerant to gluten and dairy you know we found that that's really helped us and now like over five thousand people that we've worked with have also seen similar improvements some people do choose to introduce those foods back in and maybe they're turning a blind eye to the symptoms or maybe they're just not enough of a pain point for them to keep them out long term um but we've really seen massive improvement through any you know condition i was chatting actually to a lovely lady today and um she's got a i mean we've got a new baby so that's kind of where i'm meeting these new people <laughs> um but yeah she mentioned that since she quit alcohols she doesn't have much gluten and she doesn't really have much dairy either but since she got pregnant and now breastfeeding she's not been drinking and she's noticed that her skin condition has improved mm. tenfold you know these are just these little things that maybe you wouldn't have thought of and like life is guiding you to avoid these certain things and yeah. then you notice all the positive benefits so yeah it's like yeah. a win-win i think people maybe think of it as sounding a little bit airy-fairy or conspiracy theorist but realistically there's four immune systems that we need to pay attention to which is your gut your brain your blood and your skin the issues with your brain and your blood immune systems is you can't really see what's going on there like you, you might not feel it so when we get a gut response or we see a skin response to the food that you're eating that looks like bloating diarrhea constipation um not feeling hungry or always feeling full when it comes to skin it's like a breakout in acne right through to things like psoriasis and so we can kind of say hey let's have a look at your food based on those those symptoms when it comes to your blood and your brain it's a hidden secret unless you're going and getting your blood work done or unless you're going and getting your brain scanned we don't know if it's actually having a, a negative or a positive response in the body and typically the studies that are being done around the world are showing these foods are going to create a negative response in in one of these if not all four of these immune systems and some of those immune systems you don't get affected until much later so it's like a cumulative effect over your entire life yeah you eat those foods and then you know, you've got a massive increased risk of Alzheimer's or dementia because it's going to affect your brain later on. And we're very big on prevention rather than treatment. And, you know, the things that we know are going to improve your longevity yeah. and your quality of life right now. Like, they're amazing benefits. So yeah. why wouldn't you? You know, it's just, I think something I've been focusing on a lot with clients is how can you bring the joy into the stuff that's going to make you feel good long-term, not just instant gratification? So people think, oh, I don't want a salad. Like YOLO, you only live once. I don't want to eat a salad. F that. And it's like, well, how can you bring joy into eating those foods that are actually going to make you feel good now and long term rather than the piece of chocolate or the beer? Or And we're not saying never have those things. We're just saying that, you know, 90-ish percent of the time you want to be focusing on the good stuff and mm -hmm. then you have the other stuff, but you don't overthink it or you don't feel like you're being naughty just because you're making a conscious adult decision to, to eat or drink something that's less favorable. Yeah, so many people beat themselves up. Come Friday night, they go and have some drinks or they go and eat something that's unfavorable. Uh, and so on Saturday morning when they wake up, they're like, oh, stuff it. The whole weekend's a write-off now. So they, they keep throwing themselves down the stairs until Monday morning and they have to pick up the pieces. Whereas realistically, you're only ever one meal off of being back on track. And I think that's something that people forget. They, they don't realize that they've got full control. And realistically, you're the only person that puts food in your mouth, unless you're a baby um, <laughs> or, or you're, uh, like you're, you're disabled. Like you're the person that puts the food in your mouth. So you have full control of it. It's about what's between the ears and how you, how you go about changing those things. And I know that food is addictive. I know that there's things such as uh, eating disorders or binge eating is a thing that, that happens. And 
it, to be honest, it's happened to Stace and I. It's things that, that we can really relate to because I was a binge eater. And I think to some, some extent, I still am every once in a while, but I know how to control it now. Um, I mean, everyone says, oh, you guys are perfect. You guys are robots. It's you guys, easy for you. Yeah, you guys have the perfect bodies and stuff. And it's like, well, no, what you don't understand is that everyone has a, a state of probably their own self-awareness. That, that hey like I still look in the mirror every night and say oh I could drop a little bit more fat here or like we'll talk about things I'd be like oh I could perform a little bit better here you're always your own self critic but how do we then make sure that we're not going too far one way or too far the other way and it's about finding that balance to make sure that you are supporting what you need to be doing in your life whether that's functioning correctly as a, as a sales rep or doing the best things you can for your brain so you can run a business or do school teacher so you've got energy to run around with the children <laughs> exactly right right through to even just your grandparents like making sure that they can move and function well rather than crippling over because their joints are so sore from arthritis that's actually not being created it's, it's usually being caused by the foods they're eating so it, it, it really is it's like a, a puzzle piece that keeps getting unturned because there's um i don't know there's just so much to it and so it's a big rabbit hole but realistically, our, our biggest approach has always been to help out the individual to fix their pain points because we see once they, once they see some favorable responses to that, they're very happy to keep that going. So we took a bit of a tangent there on your question. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's fine. But I mean, overall, yeah, like, you know, if people have specific dietary requirements or dislikes, it's easy to work around them, but oftentimes you know, to add to your question is we're encouraging them to remove more than they've asked us to <laughs> yeah. or swap out, I should say. And most people are going to notice a difference. I know um, with Isabella, when she went through her uh, rheumatoid arthritis and taking different foods or having different foods to reduce the inflammation definitely helped. And, mm. you know, it, the food can be, or well, it is, your medicine it, and feed yeah. your yeah. body and, and makes your body uh, run efficient. You're not going to put yeah, crap fuel in a car. You're going to put good fuel in a car. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. It. I think no, I was going to say like, I still love donuts. I still love beer. Like these are things that we still enjoy. We just learn how to do it in smaller amounts that are not going to leave you feeling, uh, I guess, messed up. messed up for the week. Like not, not going to feel you like, you, sorry, make you feel like you're in a sugar, sugar coma or make you feel like, your joints are swollen when you come to lifting day on Monday. And food is amazing medicine, but it can also be poison. So, mm -hmm. you know, to add on to Isabella's experience with rheumatoid arthritis, with the autoimmune stuff that I have going on, if I have certain foods, it flares up my arthritis. And because of the self-awareness we've created around it, I know, okay, well, that's happened. I've had too much peanut butter. I need to back off that. And then my symptoms go away. Mm. Um, and it's just having self-awareness, but also the self-respect to look after yourself in that way. Some people, you know, maybe don't care about themselves as much as they do their loved ones yeah. to look after themselves. And they're just a bit of a martyr about it. So that's another big thing about the mindset, you know, once you learn to care about yourself so that you can care for others more, um, then you're more willing to do those things. So, you know, if I'm like looking after the baby and even for the baby, I can't have, so I'm some risk from arthritis, so I need to make those steps to make sure that I'm the best I can be for her and for me. As well as yeah. making sure you're eating enough to feed the baby. Like, that's a big thing. Breastfeeding <laughs> mothers yeah. typically don't eat enough because they're too busy with the baby, but then they don't have the milk supply. And, it, yeah, it's an ongoing conversation, like I said. It, it, yeah. And it makes, you need to make sure you're feeding yourself correctly. And I think a lot of people under eat. Well, we, we see that constantly that people under eat within Australia with most of the people we've worked with, even with the people we're seeing from overseas. Under eat, but then over eat the wrong stuff. Exactly. <laughs> 2020, what's going to be new for you guys? What, what are we continuing to do? What's the plans? Yeah, so I mean, um, right now we've got some pretty big things in the works with uh, some corporate wellness stuff. So we're, we're, we've dived a lot into that, like helping out workplaces to build a better wellness program. Um, and so that's, that's kind of going on in the background right now. We've been working with certain companies like we do, we do the yoga for Virgin. We've just done um, a whole heap of different things. So we've, we've created sleep packs for um, some Hilliers and their, their traveling crew as well as going through like a full um, a nutrition challenge just for their people and saw some absolutely incredible results. But there's things in the works that we probably can't talk about just yet as well within that realm. So that's definitely going to take a fair, a fair chunk for us. 
But realistically, we're doing a lot of the same. We're still going out to gyms. We're still doing nutrition programs where we, we go and give a talk at the gym and we uh, set up the individuals with meal plans. Um, we've still got our personalized meal plans going. We've got our newer program or the phase three, which is going into the macro counting. We've still got our nutrition coaching, which is kind of encompassing all of it. Um, we have an autoimmune program as well that hasn't had much airtime. It hasn't yet. No, it's very new to the, to the board. And really it's like an in-depth look for how we can help individuals who are suffering more than the everyday person because of their autoimmune issues. Um, and I mean, really that, that, that encompasses so much. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, that's that's a, a lot of the community, unfortunately. Yeah, and whilst we're on the topic of community, like that is something that is a big focus for us is making sure that we connect. Because I feel like well, we both feel like social media and the internet is awesome for connection, um, but in real life is is you know great to be able to actually have that face to face interaction with people. So I'm not sure when this is airing, but from recording today. Uh, we're going to have a get together this weekend with any Brisbaneites um, who are around and want to catch up and you know make real life connections. Yeah, I think we're just trying to get out in the community a bit more. To be honest, we we had a lot of stuff that we're focusing on ourselves, um, which I think is important as well. And for instance, like we've got a, a new baby, but I think we're trying to get out in the community a lot more. And what when I say that, I mean like I'm starting to compete a bit more again, like taking the tying the shoes back up and seeing how that goes and getting out to competitions, not just for myself, but also to actually see and meet and talk to people more often, um, getting out to more gyms, doing more drop-ins, trying to set up with more gyms around, Hey, how can we do something for you? Um, so something that I've had going for a little bit right now is setting up gyms with a personalized meal plan for their member of the month. If that's something that they do. So if they've got a member of the month, we give them a, a personalized meal plan that's really cool just for them to be able to give their member of the month so much value because i mean it, it's not necessarily a cheap process but for us that's something we're willing to do because it it does kind of um give back to the i guess give back to the community but also gives to that individual and it, it might sound sneaky but some of the gym owners have been purposefully doing it for people who might utilize the the program more than what someone else would so for yeah. instance someone who has some form of, of um, allergies and needs some help around what to eat, they all say, hey, this person's been working really hard in the gym. That's the member of the month. We then see awesome results from that member of the month. So it, it works in both both favors, I guess. Yeah, and something else that we're excited about this year, as Maddie mentioned or alluded to, we will be running an international retreat at some point. So at some point this year, we're going to put some research into making sure that that then can be set up. Probably for 2021. 2021, yeah. Yeah, awesome. All right, guys, where can uh, people find you on the on your socials? Where, where are we at? At The Chief Life on Instagram. Uh, you can search The Chief Life on Facebook. And you guys can head across to www.thechieflife.com. We've got everything from free booklets to free nutrition consults um, with the free podcast. Like there's, there's so many little giveaways that we do there right through to the, the paid products, which we've talked about plenty in this, in this episode. So, yeah, thank you, Joel. Yeah, and actually, I was just going to say, if you wanted to grab a copy of my book that yeah. I wrote, that'll be up on our website as well. If anyone was interested in doing it themselves and just wanted a bit of guidance, then that's one way to do it. Awesome. We can um, link all those to the show notes anyway, guys. Thanks very much for your time today. It's always a pleasure. Um, this, thank you. This episode... Uh, will definitely be, be one that I enjoyed uh, immensely. I, I talked to you guys, uh, I, I guess in was about 2015 when we sort of mm. first started chatting meal plans and things like that. And I often go back to that, one of those meal plans and base things around that, around competition time when I need to drop a few kilos uh, to, mm -hmm. to make that weight class and things like that. So. It's always good to, um, I guess, go back and, and refresh things. But uh, I think I'm up for a new meal plan soon too. So look forward to that one. Awesome. <laughs> that sounds good. Thanks heaps, guys. Take care. Thank you, Joel. Thanks so much, Joel.